Hello everyone, Messy Plays here, back at it again. How are you doing today? This video will be me talking about Black Mirror Season 4. I'll be ranking it from least favourite to my most favourite episodes. These episodes are all available on Netflix now to watch and this video will be full of spoilers so I recommend that you watch them first. I'll give like a brief overview of each episode, what I liked and disliked about it, but I'll also go into easter eggs and stuff like that so I hope you enjoy the video. So at number 6 we have Archangel. This episode's pretty notable, it was guest directed by Jodie Foster, obviously the actress from films like Silence of the Lambs. Uh, it focuses on a technology that allows concerned parents to monitor their children via an app that connects to a video camera, GPS locator type system inserted into the child's brain. We saw something very similar in the entire history of You. Obviously the, that episode revolved around adults recording everything they see but we briefly see that the child the baby in that episode they look through her vision for it's a few seconds but not many people probably remember that but if you go back and watch that episode they do at one point look through the baby's eyes um one of the big criticisms of this season is that it feels like they're kind of rehashing some technological aspects this one's probably the most probably the most brazen example uh, because we do see this technology blatantly used in another episode. I'll, I'll go more into that later on. Um, overall, the episode's just kind of, it's kind of predictable. It's kind of samey. I really didn't enjoy watching it. I felt like um, I had seen the various angles that were approaching this technology with, especially the kind of, uh, censoring aspect John Hamm's character in White Christmas uh, has his vision he has other people's blocked in his vision and we see that again in this one it kind of pixelates something that might be distressful to a child there are some interesting implications behind it whether you should just shield your children from everything that's offensive in the world or whether that's a kind of natural part of development that they should experience you know within certain kind of certain kind of sensible circumstances like for example should a child see a barking dog and will that not will that naturally allow the child to be aware of dangers be more aware of okay maybe i should stay away from that those kind of questions are quite basic to me so i didn't really get kind of enthused about that aspect i, I did see what the episode was going for Obviously, if you've seen it, you know the child develops into maybe something of a, a, a sociopath at the end. She commits a real deranged act of violence against her mother. Uh, her vision is blurred at the time, so she, she's not quite aware of what she's doing, which is an interesting kind of irony to it. And then she runs away and her mother can't locate her. Overall, this episode was decent, and the good thing about Black, Black Mirror is, even when you have a bad episode, it's going to be pretty decent anyway. It's going to be better than most of the schlock on TV, so I don't hate this episode. I just think I had seen it before, and um, it wasn't for me. So that was Archangel at number six. At uh, number five, we have Hang the DJ. Again, this, I mean, most of the episodes are pretty good, so I'm not saying this is, you know, a terrible episode being number five on the list. A lot of people really like this episode. I'm glad that this season is as divisive as usual for Black Mirror fans. Uh, a brief overview of the episode is we're kind of inserted into this world immediately with, I think, Frank and Amy. They are part of this dating circuit that's controlled by a button that tells them how long they're going to interact with a certain person and when that's over they have to part ways immediately you're not given too much information to begin with on this world it seems semi-regular and then as time goes on you start to notice certain things like well the you know the courier from one location to another by these driverless cars they don't really do anything apart from dating shortly thereafter you kind of learn that they are a simulation a kind of algorithm on a dating website of a profile built based on a real person and these profiles are conducted to interact with each other to find out if they are compatible in real life it kind of cuts out a lot of the downtime 
meeting and greeting someone that you might not get on with. That's all fair enough. So it's, again, it's kind of similar to certain episodes that we've encountered before. An interesting aspect of this is that, you know, it's not like San Junipero where they are uh, transferred consciousness that is, you know, taken from the real world, put in a simulation, then taken out again. They are just a, a, a clone of a real person. Their entire experience is, you know, from the start of the simulation to the end of the simulation. And that's the, 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 uh, the, the, the amount of their existence. They don't exist beyond that. That isn't really an aspect that they're looking at in this episode. What is interesting is that these um, kind of AI counterparts are somewhat self-aware. At one point, Frank asks Amy whether she thinks it's possible that they are like simulants in a simulation and she laughs it off but then that thought is kind of incepted in her mind and she realizes that they are programmed to only be able to th uh what is it like skip stones four times on a pond and then that idea slowly builds up in her mind that maybe it is a simulation and that they need to escape so obviously that's the crux of the episode is that Two people need to inspire in, in each other, the need to escape. And then if they are compatible, they will escape together. So that's kind of like a nice message within the episode. And then we pull back at the end where they realize they're in a simulation. There's 1,000 other simulations run at the same time. And depending on the success rate of them escaping together, uh, is a deciding factor on whether they're going to be compatible in real life. Uh, it was okay. I, it wrapped up nicely. It's got some nice moments. A lot of people talk about the uh, the charisma at the center of this episode. The, the two leads are really charismatic. Even if the episode, I don't think, breaks new ground, I feel there's a there's a creative kind of juice missing where, say in season one, we have 15 million merits and... That episode has a similar, a similar kind of structure. We are dropped into this world where unwilling participants are participating in a world they don't understand, but they don't question it until like maybe the end. But they never pull back from that. They never reveal that. Uh, sorry, I can't remember what the the main character is called. But when he finally kind of ascends to that penthouse. It doesn't pull back and say, oh, by the way, he's a cookie and this is the reason that he exists in that world. This is the the logical purpose. This is just a, a an algorithm within a simulation. And I feel like it was a shame that Charlie Brooker felt the need to explain this concept as a kind of, by the way, this is why this all makes sense. I think because um, while I was watching, I was like, this is interesting that they're actually in a kind of sci-fi world. There's a big wall structure around them they are monitored they're not allowed to escape uh i thought wow that's that's a big step for them because they're never really 100 percent committed to an a totally out like out there concept oh well i guess i've just contradicted myself 50 million merits they did uh so i thought well they're doing this again that's that's quite interesting then it was like by the way no it's an app and i was like well, okay well the episode was good but i was i didn't need that end moment where it kind of confirmed uh, the whole the, the point behind everything it was just too clean of a wrap-up for me so that's why i put it at number five but obviously it's still a really good episode i, I liked it a lot so uh, hang the dj at number five uh number four we have uss callister uh this one's been a big kind of talking point for a lot of people obviously it's the first one that you're introduced to if you're watching the new season if you're new to black mirror this will be the first one you'll be seeing uh it's a very it feels like a very high budget premium episode it's got a lot of comedy a lot of heart a lot of humor and it's obviously got the the dark underbelly there's a lot of themes going into this a lot of people have made a lot of theories about it a kind of brief overview is that uh jesse plemons who plays robert daly is the captain of this kind of enterprise obviously a big star trek spoof uh, the opening scene is very like 1960s retro. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of the acting is purposely bad because they're all sucking up to him. It's very, um, 
it's very kind of Tommy Wazoo in the room esque. All the characters are devoted to this captain. They love this captain. He's a great captain. And then we pull back, and obviously, after this courageous mission, we realize that he's actually a programmer in real life. Uh, he's the co founder of this company called Callister. And um, he's somewhat bullied. He's um, ignored. He keeps a low profile. He's not really on people's radar at the company. They don't even know he's kind of a founder of the company. There's this other guy who's maybe not taking the credit, but definitely not playing up his participation in that company. I can't remember that actor's name, but he's from Westworld and... um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia as a great actor. He's, he's, he, he seems to be blowing up a bit right now. So when this new programmer starts to work there, that's played by Christy, Kristen Milliotti. Sorry if I butchered that. She plays Nanette. There's a kind of interesting role going on here. She's a female, obviously, who is interested in him. In real life, she tries to become friends with him. And he can't deal with that social interaction he's very unsure of himself he's very timid he's very um nervous and shy but he he's obviously trying to reciprocate that interest and he overhears a conversation she's, she's having with a co-worker now she doesn't um she doesn't kind of agree or participate in this kind of bad mouthing of him but she's she's listening to one of the co-workers tell her not to get too involved with him not to be too nice to him because he's kind of you know he, he's a kind of a social idiot I guess and that hurts his feelings so he this is a kind of questionable bit he takes a cup gets some of her DNA and makes a digital clone of her so she awakens inside his version of his private kind of server of the game a one that's uh, purposely retro and it's based on his favorite kind of um nerd series obviously it's a star trek rip rip off it was called callister and because the servers are running 24 7 these characters are awake these ai counterparts are awake 24 7 so she meets the crew and she's like well what am i doing here and they're like oh by the way well you're in here for life now uh, you must have pissed him off from real life or got caught his attention and she's horrified by this, obviously, as you would be. Uh, they kind of introduce a concept of cyber police in this, which is, I don't think it's been brought up in Black Mirror before, but um, it kind of, uh, they mention a couple of times that um, AI counterparts have rights, cookies have rights now, and maybe the cyber police are there to make sure cookies don't get you know, inhuman treatment, which, you know, a lot of things of every time AI is brought up in science fiction, the idea of AI having rights is also brought up. So that's not a new or uh, daring concept. Uh, there's a bit where he kind of tortures Nanette, and this has been brought up as a kind of, I have no mouth and I'm a scream reference. I must admit, I haven't read the book. I know what the book's about. Uh, the The plot is quite infamous. Basically, um, a, a super AI is invented to um, kind of control a military strategy for the, the, all the countries' wars going on across the earth. The AIs collude and destroy humanity down to the last five people. And then the AI kind of... For, whatever reason i i'm not too sure what the reason is but decides to keep the people alive keep these five people alive and just torture them indefinitely he kind of prevents them from dying he makes them live forever and while people are pointing to oh well the bit where he removed her mouth that must be a reference to i have no mouth and i'm a scream screaming i was like well to be fair this whole episode is an inversion of that book because he is a human that is transported into this world to torture AI, whereas in the book, it was an AI that was torturing humans. So I'm sorry if that's been pointed out. I'm not trying to be all, oh, I picked up on this. But uh, I did think that was a deliberate reference. 
Uh, there's a lot going on in this episode, a lot to pick apart. I'm not going to describe the plot if you've seen it. Obviously, I'm spoiling it, so I hope you've seen the episodes. I thought it was interesting how they portrayed him as... Um, they didn't portray him sympathetically. He wasn't somebody who was completely bullied in real life. He was sort of timid and somewhat cast aside, but he wasn't... There wasn't a lot of malicious bullying, so that makes his kind of um, his actions harder to reason with. And the reasons for his actions are kind of they inspire more debate. Like maybe he's not interested in a kind of fem like a physical female relationship. That's why he removes the sexual organs of all the AI counterparts. He's more interested in dominating. He wants to dominate other people's personalities. So in real life, he doesn't care about other people because it's more easy, it's more it's easier to manipulate them in a world he controls. He would rather be a god than a kind of counterpart in the real in, in the real world. So I thought that was a kind of interesting angle that they played at. Uh obviously he dies at the end. I thought that was kind of schlocky because it it felt like Oh, well, we've got to wrap this up because if they escape and he lives, then there's no issue with him just getting more DNA and cloning them again. Obviously, um, the AI characters escape into a, a kind of public server and so that they, they are free, but then he would be free to clone the real life counterparts again and again. So I thought that was just a bit of a weird wrap up that they felt like they needed to kill his character off just to make sure the audience has a bit of closure on him. I didn't know if he deserved to die. Like it's again, whether you agree with the idea of him torturing these people online. I know there's been a lot of a suggestion that this was about kind of nerd toxicity and about nerd rage, nerd culture, obviously, I don't know if Star Trek mainly, but every every subculture of a popular kind of franchise, like most recently Star Wars, there was a lot of rage about um, Ray's character being a Mary Sue. Uh, I'm sure there was a lot of hatred for the is it i'm sorry if i'm i'm wrong on this but i think it was a vietnamese woman in the new the last jedi i'm sure she's got a lot of hate because the the ceo character is superfluous and annoying so there is this kind of um i feel like the the uh, the episode plays that up uh i didn't see that mainly myself i, I saw mo as somebody who just wants to be a god and he likes to be a he likes to play god mode in this simulation where he controls the other people and it wasn't a sexual thing because they didn't have sexual organs maybe he never developed into maturity in real life where he actually needs that or, or requires that so there's a lot to unpack with this episode uh, obviously there's a lot of references to star trek and star wars i want point out all the easter eggs i don't really know know them but i know i know kirsten dunst appeared in the episode that's jesse plemons real life fiance so that's one to look out for i did like this episode but like i said it's got similar concepts that we've seen before so it wasn't my favorite it is a nice one to show people who haven't seen black mirror a kind of bombastic first episode to say look this one's going to have elements of comedy elements of science fiction uh elements of heart and you know darkness try this one try san junipero just to see if you would be able to handle the uh you know the series so this one's a good like introductory episodes for casuals but i didn't think there was a lot of meaty topics in it so it's uss calcer at number four okay so that's all i've got time for this video please join me next time when i reveal what episodes are my top three for season four black mirror Goodbye, guys.